Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another MAMG Let's Play of Steinsgate. When we left off, we choked out Moika. And now she's really upset because we took her phone. But, we can't get the, the world line to change. We've been sending emails like crazy and we can't figure out what the message was that she sent. We thought it was something to do with her phone model. But clearly, it's not changing anything. Her phone is still the same as what she had before. So, we gotta figure out what Sneaky Moika was doing. I'm guessing she sent like an email to Saren or something, but I have no idea. Crap. I don't want to go in there. My teeth are chattering. This is pathetic. I thought I'd won when I'd snatched her phone. But now my advantage is gone. Nah, we're not doing too good. Do we have a moika no kutta di meru? Kishu henko ni kan suru koto jana katta rashi. Oso naka ano onna wa okuru chokuzen de naiyo o sasukae tanda. Ore ga nani o yatte mo sekai sen ga kawaranai no wa sono sei da. Shokushin riruki wa soko ni nokotte ru kamoshirenai. Shokushin riruki. Of course, even if it's not in her send history, it should be in her arrival history. I glare at the purple phone in my hand. It's a good thing Moika didn't change phones. Now I know exactly where the D-mail went. For a second there, I thought it would be easy. I should have known better. Moika is not a casual phone user. Her mailbox has literally hundreds of entries over the last week. Almost all are from FB. Some of my mails are sprinkled in. I don't have time to search each of these mails, even just the subject lines. Not to mention, the pounding on the door is freaking me out. Christina, I hang up. The lady next door comes out again, alarmed by the escalating noise. She glares at me. But when she sees the magnitude of the door's damage, the lady opens her eyes in shock and runs back inside. I'm not leaning against the door anymore. Moika could just open it, but she hasn't realized that. She's so fixated on getting her phone back, she'll destroy her own door. In any case, I don't have time to check her mail history. I put the phones in my pockets and move to the side of the door. I carefully grip the doorknob and wait for the interval between bangs. Now! I yank the door open. A coffee table flies out and smashes into the walkway railing. <laughs> yeah, she's pissed. Her screech raises hairs all over my body. She's standing in the entrance like a uh, revenant at the gates of hell. I step back. My knees tremble. But then, I remember what I'm here to do. I gather my resolve, enter the room, and close the door behind me. Or at least, I try. The door is bent and won't fully close. I give up on locking it. Moika glares at me, shaking with fury. First, I have to restrain her again. This is a woman who would kill on command, who could break her own door down just to retrieve her phone. It's too dangerous to let her be. I'm stronger, I just need to get her on the ground. There's no time. It's now or never. Crushing my fear, I charge Moika at full speed. Our bodies collide. Moika tries to twist away, but I grab her clothes and use my momentum to push her to the floor. Uh, this is so uncomfortable still. The back of her head hits the floor. Her resistance weakens. She doesn't know how to break a fall. Some secret agent. I quickly straddle her waist. Now, she's mine. Chris! 
Moika flails her arms and legs wildly. I should have known she wouldn't give up. Her fist strikes my jaw. Fortunately, Moika is weak. The blow does little damage. I still need to stop her from struggling. First, her hands. I start with her left. I grab her wrist and pin it down to the floor. A fist flies towards my face. It pops against my left eye, blanking my vision for a second. She seems to stop struggling for a moment. Her hand claws weakly at the air. But it turns out that she was reaching for my hair. She grabs it hard. I feel several strands, strands tear free in my scalp. Ow. I get a grip on Moika's face and press her head against the floor. She tries to bite my fingers, so I pull my hand back. I grab the hand that's grabbing my hair and dig my nails into her wrist. But she still doesn't let go of my hair. All the while, her feet are pounding against my back. She's also trying to free her left hand. I can't take much more of this. I instinctively headbutt Moika with all my strength. Wow. Dude. Not cool. The sickening sound of bone against bone echoes inside my head. The impact makes me dizzy too, but I fight it. Moika goes limp. An opening. Finally, I succeed at pinning down both of her hands. Her glasses fell off at some point during the struggle. Her red, swollen eye gives off an even more demented look. There's an angry bump on her forehead where I headbutted her. She spits at me. The lukewarm saliva hits my face. Ugh. I want to wipe it off, but my hands are full. Moika glares at me. There are tears in her eyes, perhaps from the pain. <laughs> Moika breaks eye contact when I mention it. She stares at my pocket. She must have caught a glimpse of purple. I smile scornfully. Moika tries to get in to free her hands. I lean in harder to keep them pinned. My strength and position are superior, so Moika accomplishes nothing. Next, she struggles to free her body. Same result. I clamp my thighs firmly around her hips and hold her down. She occasionally knees me in the back, but I can bear that pain. It's not enough to make me forfeit this position. Moika, without a doubt. I don't do sports or anything, so I'm not that strong. But I'm on top. I don't need to expend much energy to keep her pinned. Oh my god. She can scream and spit all she likes. Nothing will make me give up this position. It's weird because, like, I don't like Moika. Like, I don't. She killed my Yuri. Like, I'm sure she has her reasons, but, like, I feel so sympathetic towards her right now because this is... It's just not right. It's not the way to do it. Moika shakes her head violently. 
She's just wasting her energy. I maintain position and stare down at Moika. Sorry, I cut him off. I didn't know he was still talking. <laughs> Until now, I've always run away from facing Moika. But I can't do that on this world line. I have to know what her D-mail said. Moika is still struggling. Well, she's a lovely person. This woman's out of control. Does she want another headbutt that badly? A knock sounds from the door. Moika and I both look at the door in surprise. I was gonna say, if it's bent and not closed all the way, that old lady might come back. <laughs> Can you keep your fighting down, please? Ugh, I didn't think about that. I can't have her calling the police. Moika suddenly screams. What now? I need to silence Moika somehow. But I can't use either hand. There's only one way. The headbutt of justice. I suddenly press my lips against Moika's. Okay then. She's gonna bite you, dude. My loveless kiss shuts her up quite effectively. I lock eyes with her as well, trading glares in silence. I finally hear the neighbor's footsteps recede. What a relief. Yeah, she bit ya. Oh. Ow. I feel a sharp pain on my lip, and I instinctively jerk away. Blood drips from my mouth and lands on Moika's neck. She bit me! When I feel around my lip with the tip of my tongue, the taste of blood spreads out from the laceration. Moika breathes wildly as she glares at me with tearful eyes. <laughs> she grimaces and looks away. Her pink lips glisten with saliva. I might find the sight alluring if the situation were different. Very different. Moika turns her face and looks up. Through the open curtains, a bright full moon outside the window. How much time has passed? It feels like it's already been dozens of hours. But it's still night outside, so it probably hasn't been more than one or two. Moika hasn't said a word since I kissed her. 
She hasn't tried to escape either. Her expression is blank. She's just staring off to the side. What is she looking at? I follow her gaze, but the only thing there is a half-empty bottle of water. Has she given up? Either way, I can't let my guard down. Maybe it's the stress, but it feels like my body is going numb. And I've been drenched in sweat for a while now. This room has no air conditioning whatsoever. The heat is starting to get to me. I thought I had an overwhelming advantage in this position, but it's harder to maintain than I expected. Not only do I have to keep Moika pinned, but I also have to keep an eye on her so she doesn't try anything. All Moika has to do is lie there. She can rest and try again whenever she's ready. Will this last all night? At this rate, my strength might give out first. Fear mounts. If she escapes, she's going to try to kill me. She must have her gun somewhere, I'm sure. I consider calling Kudus for help, but I can't use either hand and I don't even know what time it is. <sighs> it's almost like I'm the one who's trapped. No, stay positive. You can do this. Moika's dependent on her phone. That's her weak point. If I keep her separated from her phone, then sooner or later, her will to resist should collapse. It's a matter of whose strength will fail first. Okay. Suddenly, Moika calls my name. Now she's trying to ask nicely. Does that mean she's given up? This is what I was waiting for. Now, I move in for the kill. お前は。それを送った。お前自身の携帯へな。Her typing speed is lightning fast. It would have been easy for her to type a mere 36 characters, while Dado and I were preoccupied with the phone wave. Name something to change. Normally, once the past changes, everything until that point is undone. But it should be possible to make Moika remember, just as Ferris and Lukako did. Or else what? I don't know. This is just a tactic to put pressure on Moika. I have another plan to make her remember. <laughs> Moika turns away again and bites her lip. Tears start falling from her eyes. I watch, never once taking my eyes off of her. I didn't notice before, but her shirt must have become undone during the struggle. Oh really? You didn't notice that? I'm pretty sure from the beginning of the slide, everybody's noticed. I can see the alluring curves of her uh, collarbone, the skin of her large pale breasts, and a hint of sexy underwear. Her breasts have uh, heaved with a painful breath. The base of her neck is stained with blood from my lip. It's dry, like a scab. Normally, Moika, be, Moika could be mistaken for an elegant, beautiful woman. But now she has large shadows under her eyes. Her skin is rough. Her face is pale. She looks more intoxicated than intoxicating. Her entire body reeks of death. She's clearly insane. <laughs> this is the real Moika. I wish I'd realized sooner. Really? <laughs> 
何のことなのか。モイカス gaze shifts constantly from me to the、uh, from me to the ceiling and then to the window. But her slow murmuring is evidence that she's almost beat. Just a little more, and her resistance will end. <laughs> oh, she remembers that. Moika's eyes open wide. Gotcha. Oh, boy, I got it. So they go, my go, cut the D mail. No, you're zero. Oh, you can have your phone and everything. You'll be good to go. Okay, Definitely. <laughs> What? She suddenly curses at me. Her mission? I recall what Moika told me on a previous world line. Rounder's mission is to find and acquire the IBN 5100s. In that case. IBN 5100. Yeah! We know a lot more than you think we do, because we kind of lived it all, to be honest with you. She fell into my trap. Her reflexive response was all I needed to see. But Mighty's fate hangs in the balance. I can't give up. Moika still hasn't calmed down. She's been opening and closing her hands for a while now. She's not trying to escape my restraint, she's just twisting her body. Licking her lips, shaking her head, trying to brush the hair off of her face. It's like she's suffering from withdrawal without her phone. Soon, she won't have the mental fortitude to resist. If she won't talk now, then I'll just wait until she will. And when she attacked the lab, she was leading a squad of hardened killers. But Moika shakes her head violently. What? What? Who is FB or what is FB? If it's Facebook, I'm done. If she can't, like, go a day or an hour without checking her Facebook status, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Steins Gate is over. I'm seriously, I will end the series. Who, who what? That's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, FB did order that. Dub, but you did. So, Kono Sekai said, Devana. Daga bet no Sekai said, Noita. Oh, my one, I'm not to stay. Or that's no time machine or Uba Otosta. Sotokini. <laughs> On the world line where I interrogated Moika, she told me that Mighty was expendable. It didn't matter to Saren whether she lived or died. FB 
殺したい。やっと思う。エフビーとは何者だ。一体どこにいる。I asked her the same question back then, but another rounder appeared before she could answer. Something tells me she won't have backup this time. Moika's position in the rounders has changed. You know, Okabe, he's getting slightly more twisted, at least towards Moika, which I know she killed Mighty, and so he's very, very against her. But just the tactics that he uses, it's not, it's not the Okabe that we've known up to this point. And I just, I just feel myself like slowly detaching from him. Like, dude, you're losing it. Like, you shouldn't be doing it like this. Moika seems startled by this. I go in for the kill. オレはいつかここから来た。セルンが欲しがるタイムマシンを使ってな。だから知っている。お前はこの部屋で一人孤独に自分を殺すんだ。お前の大好きなエフビーはお前を助けない。ラウンダーもセルンも 300人委員会もだ。どれだけメールしても上司からの連絡はないんだろう。それはなぜだ。もう見捨てられているんだよ。What did she do? Moika's face contorts in despair. Once again, tears fall from her eyes. Guilt squeezes my heart. I know that I'm causing this woman pain. Inside of me, a voice whispers that has nothing compared to what she did to Maeri, that I have no reason to show mercy to a murderer. But at the same time, my conscience screams that it's wrong to hurt someone, no matter who they are or what they've done. Insane mad scientist, my butt. I'm afraid to hurt my mortal enemy. I'm nothing but a hypocrite. <laughs> I ignore the ache of my heart and push harder. But Moika shakes her head violently. No. おれなら、お前を殺した後でタイムリープする。私は。エフビーから返事が来ないと言って、この部屋で死んだような顔をしていたのはどこのドイツだ。だって。もう何日来ていない。エフビーからの連絡は普段はどのくらいの頻度で来
So she's referring to FB as a she. Like a mother? FB is a woman? I expected an evil looking old man like you see in the movies, but I guess I was wrong. Moika shakes her head weakly. If they had met, I could have gotten Moika to lead me to her. You know, this actually makes a lot of sense to me, though. Because Moika isn't a talkative person. Like, she's talking now, but like she said before, her phone is her connection to the world. So when she has any problems or wants to pour out her heart to somebody, she would send a message to FB. And FB would, like, be there to listen to her complain or whatever it is, uh, give her advice and things like that. And that's why she feels so close to this individual that she's never met. I can I can understand that aspect of it. Hmm. その Moika turns away, and then she nods faintly. Sakerarete お前は騙されていたんだ。FBI actually answered The IBN 5100 Moika you fool! You let your tongue slip! Two weeks ago, FB told her to leave the IBN 5100 at a drop point. That means she already had it in her possession at that time. I recall how Moika kept bombarding me with questions about the IBN 5100. I might have let it slip that I found the computer at Yanabayashi Shrine. After that, she sent her D-mail. The world line changed. The lock was broken on the Shrine storehouse door. The IBN 5100 was gone. These facts point to one conclusion. She sent herself the location of the IBN 5100. Now that I know, it seems so obvious. If only I hadn't trusted Moika. If only I had seen through her lies. But no, I played right into her hands. I was the tool's tool. I almost burst into self-deriding laughter. But I desperately hold it back and keep a straight face. The coin lockers again? The coin locker in front of Daibiru. Wait, is that where Lukaku hit the IBM 5100 on the previous world line? Is this another effect of convergence? Can I retrieve the IBN 5100 if I go there now? No. 
I can't expect it to still be there. Remember what happened with Lukaku. The invisible force of convergence is keeping the IBM 5100 away from me. If I want to get it back, I need to cancel Moika's D-mail. I know the message. I've already reached my goal. <laughs> Moika starts crying softly. I sigh deeply and lift myself off Moika's body. Then, I lean back against the wall and stretch my aching limbs. I take Moika's phone out of my pocket. <laughs> Moika slowly gets up. She wipes her tears and fixes her hair and clothes. Her wavy hair obscures her face from this angle, so I can't make out her expression. She doesn't react to what I said. Even though I'm no longer restraining her, she doesn't try to attack me and take back her phone. I open Moika's mailbox and search for the D-mail. It takes about three minutes, but I finally find it. Three mails from Moika's own phone, at least 12 characters long, sent on August 4th and received on July 31st. Retro PCs at Yanabayashi Shrine. Just as I suspected, Moika changed her D-mail in the few seconds I had my back turned. All I need to do now is send the cancellation mail. <sighs> We've been through a crazy night too, Kurisu. Oh. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save really quick. No, not quick load. I need to save. Um, because I believe this is where I need to do the thing that I've been told, which is to not send it. I need to wait and I will learn a little bit more about Moika. And then it'll loop back and I'll be able to send the email. I think this is the situation where that's going to happen. Do not go. Not at Shrine. It's a trap. While Kudisu calculates the hours, I type the mail. It says, do not go, not at Shrine, it's a trap. I address the email to the phone wave named subject to change. Oh, I press the send button. The mail starts sending. Wait, no? Reading Steiner should activate, this time for sure. I brace myself for incoming vertigo. No. Nothing! Nothing! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why isn't it working? What the hell is wrong this time? <sighs> it's not enough to convince her. もう一度。別の文面で再送を。また。D-メールの面倒な部分については、ロト6の実験で検証済みでしょ? <laughs> The Lotto 6 experiment? I sent myself the winning numbers, but the past me didn't buy the ticket. Instead, he gave the winning numbers to Lukaku. D-メールを読んだ人間がその通りに行動するかどうかは個人の資質に影響される。切り打って人は神社にIBN5100があると知らされた。直後にそれを否定するメールが来ても構わず神社へ来たという推測が導ける。否定するメールを信じなかったか。I glance at Moika. 
She's still hanging her head, but her tears have run dry. I wonder if she's listening. Can we can we pretend to be FB? That's the problem. Is it possible to persuade her with just 36 bytes of text? Or should we consider other possibilities? Oh, this is tricky. When did I start caring about the IBN 5100? I can't remember. Fine, that's out. So how do I convince Moika to listen? At that moment, an electric shock runs through my brain. Two initials. FB. ね。もう一個の上司。依存の対象。FB so even after prying answers out of Moika, there's still more work to be done. Fate really seems to love getting in my way. Alright, to break out of this world line, I need FB's identity and location. I call Moika's name. When she finally looks up, I dropped her phone into her lap. She accepts it with a confused expression. <laughs> Moika grips her phone, but she doesn't look at the screen. I sigh deeply. I need to get as much information on FB out of her as I can. Honestly, I couldn't care less. I hate having to stand here and talk with the woman who killed Mayuri. <laughs> Hugging her phone to her chest, Moika retrieves her glasses and puts them back on. Oh my god, really? Her voice is barely audible whisper. For a moment, I'm surprised she's not talking by mail. No big reason for... Wow. Her expression is blank, lifeless, like always. But behind her glasses, her eyes are red from crying. They are the only trace of emotion on her doll-like face. Mm, okay. Moika shakes her head a little. She has none, I guess. I don't bother asking her where her parent, uh, whether she had parents. It doesn't really matter. Isn't that spam? Do the rounders really recruit like that? So she feels like she owes her life to FB. Moika shakes her head. 
その前は横浜その前は The rounder's chief duty is to acquire IBN 5100s. I guess after traveling all over Japan, digging up info on retro PCs. これまでに IBN 5100をいくつ見つけたの一台も No results? Sounds like Saren is spending a lot of effort from a not much return. I sigh deeply once again. お前はこの後どうするつもりだただ絶望に打ちひしがれて予定通り自殺するか抗おうとは思わないのか抗う Even as I ask the question, I know that for her, rebellion is impossible. This world line has already approved her death. She's in the same situation as Mighty. No wonder what she does, no matter what she does, she will die. I know that, and yet I ask the question. FB は、お前を利用し、見捨てた。それを認めろ。その上で、FB に対してどうしたいと考えているんだ。Moika looks down. 利用されていたとしても、私の居場所。そこしかなかったから初めてだった生きてきた中で自分が必要とされたこと FB が居場所を与えてくれたのその居場所を守るためなら生きがいを与えてくれた FB を何だってするお前は救いようのないバカだ。I stand up. だったら依存したまま死んでいけ。お前の死は確定している。だが俺は世界の思い通りになっていいとは思わない。だから徹底的に抗う。No matter what, I will save my Yuri. Just a little bit more. I can't give up now. It's midnight, and Akiba is practically empty. The silence is eerie. There's no sign of anyone near the coin locker. Considering the IBM 5100's size, it wouldn't fit in the regular size lockers. She must have put it in one of the three large lockers on the right. Shiochi? The bottom locker is still in use. Is the IBN 5100 inside? My heart starts pounding in my chest. I feel my face grow hot with excitement. We've been apart for far too long, my partner. But now, only a thin locker door separates us. Is this what love feels like? Yeah, seriously. I force myself to consider the situation calmly. Is the IBN 5100 really inside? I want to check it right this instant. I can't believe I forgot to ask Moika which locker she used. Should I get a crowbar or something to pry the locker open? If the IBN 5100 is really inside and I steal it, what will happen to the world line? I have yet to cancel all of the D mails, which I thought was the only way to restore the original world line. But now, the IBN 5100 is so close. Why can't I just reach out and take it? I know how to cancel Moika's D mail. So, I can always、uh, do that if it doesn't work. Let's try it, just to make sure. First, I make a quick visit to the lab. Ignoring the complaints of the lab mems who stayed awake in the lab all night, I retrieve a makeshift crowbar from the development room. Then, I return to the lockers and thrust a pointed tip of the crowbar into the crack of the door. <gasps> um! Just as I begin to pry, a shrill siren shatters the night. I look up to see the red lights of a patrol car coming this way. Their timing couldn't be worse. The police release me after about 30 minutes of scolding. I return to the coin locker and try to pry it open again. Immediately, another patrol car appears. This time, they take me to the station. 
I'm stuck in an interrogation room all night, getting preached to by policemen. I conclude that this is another effect of the attractor field convergence. No matter what I do, I cannot attain the IBN 5100 on this world line. That is what fate has decreed. I get, the, uh, I get the police to call my father, and they finally release me. They didn't go so far as to arrest me, but the policemen, as well as my father, scold me harshly. I act apologetic, but in actuality, their words fall on deaf ears. This is like Okabe the criminal world line, is what it is. He's done so many things. After my father goes home, I head straight to Moika's apartment. I tried calling her. I took the opportunity to memorize her phone number yesterday, but she wouldn't pick up at all. Before I get there, I send the damn uh, mail to Daru asking him to check if the coin locker is still occupied. The door to Moika's apartment is unlocked. I find Moika hugging her knees in the corner, just like she was when I first found her. IBN 5100 was in the coin locker. Oh! IBN was in あそこには3つしかなかった。誰そのうち一番下のみが使用中。この意味がわかるか。あそこ。モイカフラウンズ。サリー。FB <笑> You can you can meet FB. Your BFF FB. That's the best way to prevent Moika from going to Yanabayashi Shrine. I don't think we're gonna be able to borrow FB's phone. If FB works for Saren. Because Moika is around her and that's what she's doing, why would they let us just casually borrow their phone and send an email to the past to undo everything that they've been doing? Moika's face contorts again. I'm being blunt, not only because Moika is Maeda's murderer, but also because Moika's weakness is starting to get on my nerves. Did she come along? Just like Dutch's mail said, the locker's still occupied when I get there. I look around to make sure there are no patrol cars. <laughs> no crowbars this time. I don't feel like getting arrested. I head across the street to Daibiru. Hide inside one of its humongous pillars. Um, uh, or hide behind. I was like, inside? Uh, and begin the stakeout. My legs are getting tired. I was going to borrow Mighty's portable game console, but I decided I didn't need the distraction. Still, it's pretty tough to keep standing like this. I also need to stay inconspicuous. Someone might notice if they see me standing in the same place for hours. I wouldn't want a security guard to give me trouble. I mean, I guess there's not much worry about that. I've already been here for 7 hours without incident. My legs are numb, so I squat and lean against the pillar. So hungry. I'd love to go get some food, but I can't take my eyes off of the locker. Just then, somebody taps me on the shoulder. FB? I try to leap to my feet, but my legs get tangled and I fall over. Oh, Moika, you made it! Moika is standing there, looking down at me with those glassy eyes. I thought it was going to be Kurisu, like... <laughs> She'd be like, what is wrong with you? I stand up and dust off my clothes. 
メールだけの関係に居心地の良さを感じていたその適度な距離感に依存していたはずなのになぜ今さら一歩を踏み出そうと思ったこのままじゃモイカ puts her head on her knees She looks ready to cry I've seen that expression once before in her moonlit apartment FB からの連絡がなくなったら私世界とのつながりが断絶されるかモイカ nods faintly 孤独に耐えられないくらい弱いのに FB の命令さえあれば容赦なく人も殺せるとはな。Yep. 典型的な狂信者だよ。お前は。<笑> And her cult leader, FB, abused her weakness before throwing her out like old clothes. It pisses me off. FB's cruelty. Moika's weakness. I can't decide which I hate more. Then, Moika nervously brings out a convenience store bag. Did she bring him food? Instead of answers, Moika looks away. I look inside. <laughs>、uh, it's kind of weird because, you know, y'all were fighting like a day or two ago, but now she brought you food. Exactly what you need on the steakhouse. There's enough for two. <laughs> Moika nods. <laughs> you can join, you brought food. Now we can take turns watching, and we'll also look less suspicious to passers by. Yeah, you guys will look like a couple, choking each other out, and that's pretty much it.、Uh, the night draws on, and still no sign of FB. We nap in hour shifts, but it doesn't help with the exhaustion. On top of that, I don't have anyone to talk to. Moika can't keep a conversation going, so there's nothing I can do to stave off boredom. Yeah, says the person who couldn't talk to Lukaku at all. I went back to the lab to shower just before dawn, but Kurisu, who was working an all nighter on the Thai Link machine, just glared at me. The wait finally ends just after 1 p.m. on the 13th. Someone comes to open the lower right locker. We watch from behind the pillar. It's a nondescript middle aged man. He's dressed in a new suit, but it hangs rather poorly on him, as if he's not used to wearing it. Moika shakes her head firmly. Or could it be someone from the locker company here to clear it after two weeks overdue? That would make us all idiots Moika, FB, and me. The man has the key to the locker. He pays a light fee with 100 yen coins. Then removes the cardboard box with the IBN 5100 inside. And that sucker's heavy, too. The man thought ahead and brought a push cart. He puts the IBN 5100 on the push cart with a bit of effort and begins walking away. I feel like Moika's gonna get killed. The man heads straight for Akihabara Station. Strangely enough, he walks up to an overweight man standing in front of the ticket machine. The overweight man is wearing a t shirt and has all the signs of one Lotaku. He doesn't seem to have anything in common with the first guy, who looks like an average salary man. They transfer the IBM 5100 into the overweight man's suitcase. Suitcase? After they exchange a few words, the overweight man、uh, enters the station alone, then the guy in the suit leaves. What was the purpose of that transfer? Is the overweight man FB? Or is he just another link in some kind of chain? At any rate, we keep following the IBN 5100. We should reach FB eventually. We enter the station. The overweight man boards the Yamanote line. We board onto the next car and keep watching through the connecting door. It's a weekday afternoon, so there aren't very many passengers. 30 minutes later, we arrive at Shinjuku Station. Here, the train sees a sharp increase in passenger traffic. Moika pulls on my sleeve. The overweight man 
has slipped out into the stream of departing passengers. He's about to exit onto the platform. We follow him, but due to our slow reaction, we have to push our way through the boarding passengers. The train doors close and it slowly departs. The man starts walking towards the exit. Shinjuku is crowded, so we have to follow close behind or we'll lose him. But then, I stop in my tracks. The man is empty handed. His suitcase is missing. Oh, that's slick! What? For a second, I think we followed the wrong man, but no, it's definitely him. We watched him the whole time he was on the train. There's no doubt he had the suitcase when the train arrived in Shinjuku. Could he have passed it to someone else in this crowd? That is very clever. They know how to lose a tail. Oh, oh, we left back. <laughs> I return to the lab and leap an hour back. I find myself inside the train. I know it's bad manners to use my phone on the train, but this is an emergency. According to the train's display, we're about to leave Osaka for Ikebukuro. Three stops to Shinjuku. Moika is next to me, acting inconspicuous. I peek at the overweight man in the next car. What if he leaves it on the train? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Doesn't look like Moika's caught on yet. We, we don't have time to explain it, seriously. Moika's eyes widen. The train arrives at Shinjuku on schedule. Just to make sure, I'll have Moika follow the man when he gets off. Before the doors open, I stealthily move to his car. He still has a suitcase with the IBN 5100. Shinjuku. Shinjuku. The doors open and the passengers spew out. The overweight man leaves too, just like last time. However, Yari. did he leave it? He leaves the suitcase on the train. And now, passengers from Shinjuku board. Someone walks up to the abandoned suitcase. It's a woman in her 30s pushing a baby stroller. There's no baby. The woman casually loads the suitcase into her stroller and sits down. After witnessing that scene, I return to the neighboring car. I need to be careful. These guys are serious about avoiding pursuit. The train starts moving. I contact Moika so we could regroup later. After that incident, the package swaps couriers like a hot potato, snaking around the tracks that run through Tokyo like a web. Whenever they give me a slip, I time leap and resume the chase. Finally, the courier and package uh, get aboard the Hibiya line and return to Akihabara Station, where it all began. I recognize the last courier. He's one of the men who raided the lab with Moika. Dark skin. Crew cut. The one who hit me with his gun. The man easily carries the 25 kilo package out of the station. We follow. A car honks its horn. Moika and I immediately hide. Peering out from cover, we see a white flatbed parked in the front of the station. A muscular man hops out of the driver's seat. I know that face. No. It can't be. I desperately tried to reorganize my thoughts. That's Tennoji Yugo, owner of the Brown Tube Workshop. Mr. Brown. Why? Why is he here? Does this mean he's connected to FB? To the Rounders? Well, was the Brown Tube Workshop just a front for Saren? Is that how they could afford to keep it open? What's going on here? Does he work for Saren? Because that, that actually connects a lot of dots though. Like the fact that they had the direct line to Saren from that building. And also, why would they have a, a freaking CRT workshop directly under the Future Gadget lab? Like, I don't know. His shop is right below, below the lab. If he's working for the enemy, then... I shiver at the thought. 
Stop. Let's not rush to conclusions. He might just be another courier, but still. We watch from a distance. Tenoji takes the suitcase from the crew cut man and loads it into the back seat of his car. He then goes into the car alone and takes off towards Shoadori. I stare after it in disbelief. I time leap several hours before the first man arrived at the coin locker. Then, I explain the situation to Moika. My plan is to get ahead of the package. After killing some time in uh, Starbucks, we rent a car. I don't have a license, so Moika's driving. We go to the street in fr uh, front of the roundabout facing Shouadori and park near Yodobayashi camera. Now, we wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was surprised Moika had a license in the first place. Apparently, FB told her it would come in handy for her rounder work. I have Moika wait in the car while I keep a lookout on the roundabout. The white station wagons already stopped there. From this distance, I can clearly see Tennoji in the driver's seat. Nobody else is riding. The crew cut guy should arrive just after 5 p.m. As expected, the crew cut man arrives right on time, effortlessly dragging the suitcase behind him. It feels weird seeing the exact same scene from a different angle. I hurry back to the car where Moika's waiting. The station wagon rolls past us. It takes a left turn at Shoadori intersection towards Oka, uh, Okachimachi. Moika smoothly sets the car in motion. Finally, we arrive at the Tennoji house in Okachimachi. This is the house where Suzuha lived. Her rusty old mountain bike is still sitting in front. Tennoji brings the IBN 5100 inside. We stop a little farther down the road and keep watch. どういうことだ。FB。Is he FB? Does he know FB? Moika insists that FB is a woman. So maybe it's Tenoji's wife, who I've never met. I have Moika show me one of FB's males. It's true that you're not very good with people, but I think that's part of what makes you unique and special. Besides, you have no trouble talking to me, do you? Honestly, M4, there's nobody else who works as hard as you do. I'm very thankful for that. I'm glad you joined the Rounders. Even if nobody else values you, I'll always look out for you. Feel free to email me whenever you like. Oh yes, if you're finally in Nagoya, you should try some of the local delicacies. It's, uh... Not good for your health to keep eating convenience store food, or do you not like miso, M4? In any case, a girl your age needs to eat better. I recommend, a uh, firm miso stew. Your next mission is to go to Akihabara in Tokyo and find an apartment by next week. I deposited a special bonus in your account, so feel free to use it. Talk to you soon, your mother, FB. She kept a lot of emails, uh, mails archived like this one. Moika's a mailing machine. She sent FB nearly 10 mails a day, but FB replied to every single one. You'd have to be a saint to reply to all those emails. No wonder Moika was so dependent on FB. I have Dadu set up a wireless infrared camera on the telephone pole down the street. We park a couple blocks away and I watch the video feed. The next day, Tennoji goes to work on his moped like usual. He returns after sunset. There's no sign of his daughter, Nae, or his wife. Something finally happens early Sunday morning. 
just before 3 a.m., six people show up at Tennoji's house. It's dark, but I recognize them. They're the rounders who raided the lab with Moika. Moika doesn't show much of a reaction. I thought she knew them. I ask, but she says she's never met them before. It looks like this Worldlands Moika has been cut off completely. Uh, were they done with her once she found them in IBN 5100? Tennoji comes outside and loads the IBN 5100 into the station wagon. Then, six men get in and drive away. Tennoji sees them off, then goes back inside his house. I'm interested in Tennoji's story, but the IBN 5100 will lead us to FB. We decide to follow the station wagon. The pursuit ends at Narita International Airport. The six men, the IBM 5100 in tow, board a plane headed for France. France. Saren's home country. What does this mean? Since there's been no sign of FB thus far, she must be an extremely cautious individual, but evidence suggests only one possibility. On Worldlight Alpha 1, Moika's men attacked the night of the time leap machine was completed, their timing was perfect. It makes sense if you assume that Tennoji is closely linked to FB. He was right downstairs the whole time we were discussing our plans. FB knew exactly what we were up to. We were dancing to her tune all along. When we get back to Akiba, Moika and I start walking toward Tennoji's house. But on the way, I get an angry call from Kurisu demanding an update, so I decide to take care of that first. <laughs> Kudis is so mad. Kudis is sighs when she sees me. We got a mail. From Mayuri? I saw Orion last night. It was really pretty. I hope you were looking up at the same time. Because then it would be like we were close by. Uh, even if we were really far away. Stars are romantic if you think like that, aren't they? Yeah, I saw it too. First night in a while I've had time to look at the stars. But I don't think it was Orion. That's a winter constellation. Aw, Mayuri. She's so cute. Okay, anyways, Kudisu, what's up? Little bit scrumpy face. <laughs> she doesn't buy it at all. Kudisu glances at Moika. Oh. Oh, We're doing this for her, though. <laughs> okay, I'll give her a call. Mayuri! I can't. I, I can't call her. Now that she mentions it, it feels like I haven't talked to Mayuri in forever. Kudisu glances at Moika again. Moika is completely expressionless. She's slightly kicking the dirt in boredom. She hasn't used her phone once since we began the search for FB. However, Moika's just a pawn, and one that's no longer poses as a threat. To save Mayuri, I need to capture the king. Well, the king's cell phone. まあいい。それで。これからどこか行くんでしょ。私もついていく。正気か。助手よ。正気だけど、助手じゃないから。<laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kudusu falters for a moment, but quickly tightens her expression. No. I've experienced the future, so I know who dies today. 
だったら問題なし<笑>世界から死なないことを保証されたようなものだから Right Kudisu doesn't die today and neither does Mayuri The only person who dies today is Kiryu Moika This afternoon she kills herself I've already told Moika her fate but in spite of that Moika doesn't seem upset at least on the surface She's expressionless as always. The only difference is that she's not checking her phone as often. But Moika's not a strong woman. Beneath that expressionless mask, is she, uh... Oh, it's a question. I was like, is she struggling? Is she struggling against the fear of death? Got it. Question marks. Don't know they're there till the end. I decided to confront Tennoji directly. I have goodies to stay in guard outside the house while Moika and I go inside. Not that we're planning to break in, we ring the doorbell like honest citizens. Tennoji soon opens the door and invites us in to the living room. Oh, we're in his house. Got it. For some reason, I thought we went to the store. The divergence major is still sitting in its usual spot. I glance at the numbers. 0.523307%. There's still a long way to go before I can reach 1%. How much more of this can I take? It's just after dawn. Much too early for guests, but Tennoji welcomes, welcomes us with a smile. He even starts preparing some instant coffee. It's <laughs> I'm more interested in his wife. There's still no sign of her. Is she asleep too? Or could she be hiding somewhere? I'd like to do a thorough search of the house, but of course, that's impossible. And then, there's what he said about seeing Nai off to school. That sounded like something a single father would say. I suspected that FB was Tennoji's wife, but that may have been a mistake. Maybe Tennoji is just another courier after all. Maybe he doesn't even know about FB. There's the possibility that FB might not even be in Akiba. I need answers. But how do I get them? Moika is just staring at the floor. I can't count on her for any bright ideas. And whether or not Tennoji's wife is FB, I don't think this man will fall for any tricks. I decide to go for the direct approach. This time, Tennoji doesn't give me his usual macho attitude. He just smiles softly. This is too easy. He's never this cooperative. Instead of answering my question, Tennoji looks straight at Moeka. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Moika jerks upright. She's gonna die. M4 is Moika's code name. Something only FB would know. Tennoji laughs once. A dry sound. Ferdinand Brown Moika and I look at each other, confused by the sudden change of topic. FB? Tennoji has a thing for brown tubes, I know that. But what does that have to do with anything? Um, 
Um. Okay. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh my God. Really? Okay. I'm going to take a break right here because we're at like the hour and 20 minute mark. It's a good place to stop it. Things are about to happen. Moika's going to get shot for sure because she dies today. What's going to happen to Okabe though? And where's Kurisu? I don't know. There's so many things I need to figure out, but holy crap. Ten noji. Ten. Oh. This is crazier than when we found out that is hidden lineage. Oh my god, this is insane. Okay. I'm going to breathe and relax so I don't hyperventilate right now. But this is crazy. I'm going to leave this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next MANJ. Let's play. Suicide? Why? She was alive in all the other world lines. Like, I know, it looks like a murder scene. But, why? Why was she... What caused her death? I mean, like, I know what caused it, but what triggered the events of... Ah, uh, my brain's not working. Suicide? But, why? That's why she didn't respond.